hear from the AVS team, audio video streaming on with Red Pipe. This is the list of our team members. On the login module, Praveen Shah, Pooja Pandey, Utkarsha have worked. On the whiteboard and chat module, Nagasuda and Praveen Shah have worked. On the document and online users module, I myself Shivani Maheshwari. And on the video module, Nikita Gupta, Priya and Vishal have worked. We have worked, we have worked towards the development of a web, of a web e-distance learning tool which makes you, uh, which is a substitute for the proprietary tool AVU developed at the Amrita University. The AVU makes use of the FMS server for media streaming, whereas, where, whereas we make use of the Red5 server, which is an open source server. The hardware requirements for our uh, application include an external web camera, an external microphone, headphones, and the stake note, which is an additional optional feature that we can use. For software requirements include a Red5 server, Flash Builder, Flash Player, Apache, MySQL, PHP, SWF tools and FlexPaper. The languages which support our application include Java, Flex, ActionScript and PHP. The login module. The user submits his username and password it goes to the web server for authentication. Based upon the type of user, whether he's admin, student, or teacher, he's redirected to his own homepage. This is the, uh, how the user uh, interface looks like at the time of login. The admin home. Admin has the functionality of course registration, user registration, my profile. The features include add, update, delete, search for courses, as well as for the users, because the admin is the sole person who has the right to modify, create, or delete any of the accounts or course. Means no other user can uh, sign up on his own. In order to sign up, the admin should sign him up and uh, provide him with a valid password so that he can log in. And uh, after login, he can change his own password. This is how the user registration page for admin looks like. On clicking on this show all user buttons, uh, show all user button. It shows all the users registered for uh, all the users registered for attending any of the classes, uh, any of the class which will go on. Uh, by add, update, and delete and search user, he can search the user information. Show all register on clicking on any of the user and clicking the uh, show all register courses. It will show the registered courses for a particular user. The teacher home. The teacher has following functionality available for him. The public chat, whiteboard module, my profile, document and teacher video. The important thing to be noticed here is that the whiteboard and document. The teacher has full access to whiteboard and document means he can edit or change any of thing on this and the same will be reflected on the student end means all the students, those who are connected to that particular course will be able to view whatever te teacher has done. This is how the teacher page looks like. The student home. The student also has the facility to do the text chat, same as the teacher, which is the public one. And he has a facility to raise hand. Means in case the student faces any doubt during the session, he can just click on the raise hand button and that will raise his hand up, indicating, the, which acts as an indicator for the teacher that the student has a doubt. The teacher can select that particular student, access his stream and answer his doubt. The document view of whiteboard module is the same one which is shared from the teacher end, but the thing to be noticed is that the teacher will change the uh, things on these, will be reflected on the student side, but the student's changes will not be reflected anywhere. Then he can view or watch the teacher's video, whatever lecture is going on. This is how the student home looks like, and he can select any of the courses and attend that class. The whiteboard module. The, as I told you earlier, the teacher has a full control to the whiteboard. The wi uh, he, whatever uh, he or she writes on the whiteboard, the query is uh, ex uh, transferred to the media uh, streaming server. Uh, and by the help of the shared objects, the same uh, is reflected on the student end. And uh, all the students have a single channel access to the whiteboard. This is how the whiteboard looks like with the following button of clear, save, pen, line, circle, rectangle, round rectangle, ellipse, and all. 
and the teacher can draw anything on it. It acts as a white canvas for painting. The online users. The online users, this is uh, what I was telling about the uh, hand raise. This is uh, for the teacher side. Similarly, on the student side, he has a hand raise and hand drop option and the teacher has access stream and stop stream. See, like here, Priya has a doubt. Uh, she has raised her hand. So the teacher can access the stream. Of, uh, just click on it, access the stream of Priya and can view uh, Priya's video and answer whatever doubt Priya has. The chat module, this is uh, the uh, public chat which is available to all the uh, users who have been registered to that course and uh, all can uh, enter into this chat. But this chat is uh, public to only the users who are in that particular course. No, no other user in the other course will be able to view this chat. The document module which makes use of a flex paper which is like a PDF viewer and uh, the important or uh, we can say the uh, main feature of it is that it loads the SWF files not the PDFs directly. So in order uh, when the teacher, uh, the teacher will only be able to upload the uh, PDF files uh, by making use of a filter we have made this facility. So uh, when the teacher uploads a PDF file at the time of upload the PDF will get converted to SWF by making use of SWF tools. Both these SWF tool and flex paper are open source. So uh, the teacher will uh, upload a PDF which will get converted to SWF on the fly or at the time of upload and uh, this SWF will be loaded onto the flex paper. So the teacher can use the document for teaching uh, whatever he wants to teach. This is how actually the uh, document viewer looks like at the teacher end. This upload PDF, uh, on clicking on this, this will show the files on the file system of the teacher. He, uh, only the PDFs, uh, so he, can up, uh, he or she can upload the PDF. That uh, combo box shows the uploaded PDF by that teacher. Clicking on that, on the load PDF, will load the uh, corresponding SWF of the PDF in this flex paper. The video module, which is the live streaming of the video, the teacher can publish his or her stream and start the session. All the students access that published stream of teacher uh, to, um, to attend the class. And uh, beside the teacher can answer the doubt uh, raised by any of the student by accessing his or her stream. And the student can see the self video as well. See, the uh, below one shows uh, the teacher video. Ab above one is the student video, which the student is able to see. And uh, this, is, uh, this single panel at the side is for the self video. Anyone can view his or her self video. For future works, we can enhance the whiteboard module, making use of more uh, flexible designs and uh, making use of highlighters. And uh, for the document viewer, uh, we can make use of any tool which, uh, via which the teacher can upload any sort of file which gets converted to PDF, then to SWF. Then uh, for the text chat, we can make use of rich text, uh, profile pictures uh, of that particular user and smileys. And uh, the most important part which we, were, we wanted but uh, due to time constraint we were not able to do was encoding, video encoding and audio encod encoding. Then session recording feature can also be added and performance testing obviously. These are the references we have mainly referred to AVU and uh, the other open source tools which were through, uh, made on this concept. Thank you. Good morning all. The classes from here and student will be accessing the video P. Okay. <laughs> what you can see is the classroom page for teacher. This is the classroom page. Here student video will come when somebody will ask the doubt. This is the list of online users. See, we are from there, session and the teacher so this is my 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 name. And this is Vital, he is Vital. So that from here. These are the four three students attending this class. Now Teacher will. Now, this is the teacher publishing his own video. So, all the students have got the video of the teacher now. Everyone got the video? Everyone see? Now, I will start teaching on the whiteboard. And we have this. For whiteboard, we have used Take Note. It's actually uh, a digital uh, uh, input device for writing your notes.
this is the whiteboard being used by teachers and this is available on all the students to all students now if some any of the student has a query she can raise or he can raise their hand exactly. and then i'll be notified here that somebody has raised their hand so please someone if you can anybody help me out so many times here all of them have raised their hand <laughs> I'll select Sudha. I'm selecting Sudha. She's given the option to access her camera. So here comes Sudha on my video, student video. I can see her. Now she can ask her doubt, and everyone, uh, uh, every other student also is able to see her video. You can see in there. Direct con conversation between the student. The conversation between the student and the teachers uh, is uh, available to every person. Teacher replying, good morning. If a student uh, gives an in, uh, gives the chat, then it will be a message will be displayed over here. The name of the student will be displayed on the chat tab. Now this is a whiteboard module. This is shifting to our document module. So this is the document module. This is text paper which we explain in which we can upload PDF, which will be converted to SWS, and which will be finally load in this flex paper. First of all, I'll show you. Okay, this is, these are the already uploaded files. I'll take any one of those and load it. something in whiteboard. So these are the tools which he can use. So these are the tools which he can use for his uh, whiteboard. Like he can use lines to draw straight lines. He can use circles, rectangle, round rectangle, eclipse. He can use the erase button to erase something. Erase an area. Select some area, delete it. Here. Now this is it for whiteboard. <coughs> On the admin page, uh, we have uh, all these buttons. My profile, where the user can see his profile. Here. Uh, the username is admin, first name Shivani Maheshwari registered as an admin and all the contact details. Here we have given an, uh, uh, an option to change the password. That is minor. That is okay. Okay. Login, password, etc. are all 
and uh, then the uh, admin can register a course. Here he will he will add the course. Suppose uh, I have to register for uh, compiler design. As we click on confirm, the data that will be updated added that will be shown in the grid. We can click and update. The change will be reflected in the data grid. We can also delete this course uh, by uh, selecting the uh, uh, field and then uh, clicking delete course. <coughs> Here we have uh, added a button to uh, show all the courses that have been registered. Uh, this button has been added so that uh, if it happens that more than uh, 100 or many uh, courses have been registered, so at the time of loading uh, the page, we don't have, uh, if we display it in the data grid, then uh, it will take some time to load all the data. So we have given this special functionality so that uh, only when the admin requires, then only he can show all the registered courses. So on double clicking this button, all the courses that have been registered will be shown. Then uh, we can also search course uh, on basis of all these fields. Suppose I enter Lunavla and confirm, then the course that has been registered with the venue Lunavla will be displayed. We have also added these three buttons, uh, like on clicking for the course and registering member. And if we enter the username, like Here, because the user has not been registered in the database, so it will ask for the details. Here the member will be registered for the course, as well as his details will be put in the user uh, data grid. And uh, then after that, we can also show all the members that have registered for this course. All these users have registered for this course. And suppose we have to deregister a member, then we'll click show registered members. This member will be deleted from the course. Then after that we have, we can, uh, the admin can al is also supposed to register the users. So the same add user. The student has been registered and his uh, details have, are being displayed in the data grid. We can similarly add, update and delete the user. We can search users on the basis of these fields. Suppose all the admins have to be displayed, then see the only one admin has been registered, Shivani, uh, his details are being displayed in the data grid. Suppose we have to know uh, this user has registered for which course or uh, then we can uh, click on show all registered courses. This display button will display all the details of the course that for which the user has registered. Suppose this user has to deregister a course, we can select display and then deregister. This on selecting we can also um, register him for a course, for example. On clicking register, because the member has already registered for this uh, course, so only the notification has been displayed, already registered. Thank you. So Sajjan is here. So, and where is Sau? Ah. So let me confess something. 
when this project was to be included in the internship program, I had a very limited objective. The AVU, which our team members mentioned as a proprietary tool, it is not a proprietary tool. It was intended to be an open source tool, but because they could not use a open source video streaming server, that tool became proprietary. That tool incidentally is available at no cost, at no license fees for every educational endeavor in engineering education in the country. For all users, students, teachers of engineering colleges in the country, it is available. It has also been funded like us uh, by MHRD. The problem is that because it was not clear to them right from the beginning that whether they are writing an open source tool or a proprietary tool, the development happened mostly in a consolidated small group and it was not shared. So there is no open source community behind AVU. But there is a large community of people who are working on it. It is about a year ago when we started experimenting with that tool. We were earlier using tools which came along with uh, whatever uh, you call the, the uh, satellite links that we had obtained from, whatever was the proprietary application, that is what we, are, we were using at that time. So when this tool came in the early stage of development, we decided to adopt it. And as we speak today, that is what is being used in all our courses. Okay. The original idea was to make AVU open source. And it is with this intention that we initiated some early activity last year and a full-fledged MTech project, which Satya Sahu is doing. Sahu's contribution is uh, jointly with Sajjan to discover RAID 5, to experiment with RAID 5, and to make RAID 5 installable and usable. Those of you who have struggled with open source software, which has very poor documentation, or Hungarian documentation, you would know how difficult it is to live with that kind of code. So Sau lived with that, installed it, made it usable. Now my mandate to him was that lead a team of interns primarily to get the AVU proprietary video streaming server, which is Adobe server, replaced by RAID 5. So what he said is, I am anyway looking at all the interfaces which are required, and unless the AVU team comes here and tells us what are the interfaces through which they are accessing Adobe server, there is no way we can replace that. So that is why he said, give me a free hand and let us try to do something independently here. I did that very grudgingly, knowing that without specifications of what to do, people may go in haphazard directions. I am very glad to observe that in spite of that, people did something sensible. Although I understand that the requirements were changing till last moment, which is not how you run software projects, by the way, such as this, for you particularly. But I think what, have been achieved, what has been achieved is really extraordinary. There are some glitches. For example, on the whiteboard, your red tip of the pen looks bigger than even the characters which are shown. Secondly, there is some glitch. Except for the line diagrams which are drawn with your tool, the handwritten material is not coming without distortion to the other side. There is some little distortion. Some pixels are missing. But these are minor irritants. For an attempt which has been done by the first time, I don't think any team member who participated in this had earlier written software of this kind, where you are dealing with videos, dealing with documents, dealing with this. So I hope you had a good experience doing it. So let's give them a big hand. This is extraordinary what they have achieved. <laughs> Unlike other groups, they did not even know what to do when they started doing it. So that is really remarkable. They have achieved something. Uh, I will unfortunately have to close this uh, thing here. But I think some tea has been arranged for them. No. Tea is there. It will come anyway. 11 o'clock tea will come. Uh, we'll reschedule the remaining things, but I just wanted to make two observations. I've gone through the reports. While the reports are well written, they are neither in the form of a user manual nor in the form of a technical documentation. They are in the form in which you would typically be submitting a seminar report or a project report in your institution. Please understand the difference. 
those are submitted as an academic requirement. So there you give overview, you give functionality, uh, you etc. Uh, etc. Et but when you do a project, either hardware or software, and implement it, then you are required to produce two clearly distinct documents. One is a user manual. I would think that most of the reports that you have submitted are on the lines of user manual, also containing some technical details. But a technical manual would have a very detailed design document included, which will say which are the which will describe even the code. For example, in all all the reports that you have seen, there is no mention of the list of modules written or list of uh, object library contributions made, lines of code written. There is no mention of this. How many lines of code the hardware clicker team has written? Although that is, it is wrong to count uh, number of uh, lines of code because everything goes into a small memory and therefore the code has to fit there. There is no mention, for example, that this sound uh, uh, attribute which the clicker hardware team has implemented, how many bytes does it take for that code to run? No idea? A simple question. The clicker software also has to reside in that limited memory of 32 KB. In addition, the voice uh, code also has to reside. Can these two together fit into 32 KB? Otherwise, I will have to give two clickers to every student. One for speaking and one for responding. It's not affordable. So these are some hard questions that we need to ask. What needs to be done now, and there's a whole lot of work, which of course some professional programmers on my team will do it over the next uh, uh, time. I may not be able to release the voice application in the first instance if it does not fit together with the rest of the clicker application. Because what is important is the clicker. What is important is for students and teachers to give feedback on what is happening academically. Please understand that in a classroom, even if there is no microphone there, I can supply a microphone like this to a student and student can ask a question. That's what we do currently. But what we are trying to do with that module is something extraordinary. Half a minute or one minute is spent in taking the microphone to a student in a large class. That time can be saved. And therefore, the tempo loss which may happen otherwise can be saved. It's a very important pedagogical point in learning and teaching. So, very good work, but some additional technical documentation. Particularly, I find, at least from these two samples, that all students are absolutely oblivious about the sizes of the code that they have written. And it does not matter whether the code has been written for an embedded software or code has been written for an application. There is absolutely, absolutely no reason why each one of you should not know by heart what are the lines of code written for different modules. What are the total lines of code that the group has written? And what is the size of the compiled and linked version for a normal software application? And what is the in-byte code for an hardware application? These are absolutely crucial quantitative components which must be known. Because these decide whether ultimately you will be able to use that software meaningfully or not. Particularly for embedded systems. I am sure all of you have this at the back of your mind, but neither your training in your colleges nor your work here seems to have sensitized you to the absolute importance of these figures. I had asked this question once to a couple of people that when you compile a program on a programming course, what is the size of the executable? Nobody knows. Everybody says few megabytes. One megabyte or hundred megabytes? Nobody knows. Please understand that you are using the machine's memory. Will you, will you be able to be comfortable if somebody asks you, you are building a house, how many rooms it has? Will you say, no, I don't know, many rooms? Or how many people are staying in your house? I don't know, perhaps five. Will you answer like that? Just as the number of people and number of rooms in a house are important to you, they are vital to you. They define the way your house and your family operates in exactly the same way. The code that you write, the data that you use, and how it sits in the bytes available is equally important. So please make a note of it. And I would like 
two or three or four pages added to the reports which have been submitted and similar pages to be added to other reports which will clearly state how many modules have been written. In fact, the technical documentation should say what is the brief functionality of each module. What is the design architecture of the whole system? If you can do that, well and good. You have only one or two days, meaning eight or ten hours to do that. I would suggest you do that first. Writing proper technical documentation is important. So I'll ask you this question. You now read your own report as if you have come here next year to do a follow-up project on this. You do not know absolutely anything about what has happened. And from this project you have to start. It does not even say which is the CD labeled such and such which contains all my code and uh, with which staff member of Professor Fatak that CD is to be found. It does not state that. What it tells me is that you have no intentions of cutting such a CD, labeling it properly and submitting it before you depart. Because you don't think that is important. You have done your work, you have learned a lot of things and you have done excellent work. For you that is the end of the game. That is not so. In real life there has to be a continuity of the projects that you do. Don't forget you are able to do something not because previous students of the last internship program documented something well but because I had my team here in each of the cases to tell you what exactly was happening. Everywhere you will not have such a facility. Is that agreeable? So excellent work. I am very happy with these two projects. I think what has been done is even beyond what I had imagined. So my compliments once again. And uh, some of you are second year students, right? So that is, that is really good work. These presentations, I believe that they are useful to all. Although you would not have worked on each and every project. But I hope you agree that when you go back, should be able to proudly say that while we were a team of 10 or 12 people working on this, we are actually part of a larger group of 70 interns who together did all of this. Okay? Thank you very much. And let's give them a big hand. Really good work. I appreciate it.